Hi guys, this is Elisa. I have a step two question for you. You can go ahead and pause this if you wanna read the question on your own as well as answer it, but I'm gonna get started. So a previously healthy 65 year old woman sees her physician for a one month history of sleep disturbances and sadness, which started after her husband died in a car accident. She stays awake for multiple hours and has crying spells throughout the day and night. Several times she has been woken up by the sound of her husband calling her name. She has lost two kilograms over the past month. She has two children with whom she has been spending time with and regularly attends church services with her friends. She expresses a great feeling of loss over the death of her husband. She has no suicidal ideation. She's alert oriented, neuro exam is denied. So which of the following is the most likely diagnosis for the patient's symptoms? So let's go through this question. This is a 65 year old woman and she's had a one month history of sleep disturbances and sadness after her husband died. So immediately we know this question is leading us towards the depression versus bereavement versus what is this um, kind of route. She, uh, she hears her husband calling her name. Now that's kind of a little abnormal. Um, so you should pay attention to that. She has lost weight. So she lost two kilograms. Oops two kilograms over the past month. However, she still spends time with her children and she socializes. She exp um, has a feeling of loss. And then there's no suicidal ideation. Uh, so our options are major depressive episode, which is um, possible in someone who lost a family member. We have generalized anxiety disorder, normal bereavement, acute stress disorder, PTSD, and adjustment disorder with depressed mood. So when you look at these questions, um, the first thing you should do is think timeline. So this, in a, is a, for example, is a one month history of a sleep disturbance um, and sadness. So immediately we know that it's not generalized anxiety disorder. And, um, it's not acute stress disorder. Why? Because generalized anxiety disorder takes at least um, six months and um, acute stress disorder is less than one month. So let's cross these out. There's also the uh, fact that she doesn't really have anxiety. Um, and then this could be an acute stress disorder. Um, However, there's no uh, feelings of, you know, she does have intrusive thoughts, but it's not, um, she doesn't have flashbacks of the event, like she wasn't in the car and then suddenly, you know, there was a car accident and she has flashbacks of the car accidents. Um, she's not, she doesn't have increased arousal. She doesn't have, you know, irritability, hypervigilance, stuff like that. Okay, so we cross out those. So major depressive episode um, is another one that you can think about as one of the uh, first things you look at so siggy caps is something you should remember for both your career but especially for these exams um, you must have five of the categories and the categories are sleep disturbances um, interest guilt energy concentration um, appetite, psychomotor, agitation or retardation, and then suicidal ideation. So out of those, she has sleep disturbances. She has um, a weight loss, so loss of appetite. Um, and she, uh, we don't know anything about, you know, psychomotor agitation. She has no suicide. She has, um, you know, the feeling of loss might be attributed to guilt. So that's plus or minus three. Um, but her interest is the same. She still goes to church, hangs out with her kids. Um, and you can assume that her energy is the same. Um, but either way, even if her energy wasn't, that's still four. So she, it's not MDD uh, or major depressive disorder. So we can take that one out. And then MDD, the other thing is it has to be, these symptoms have to be present for at least two weeks and she meets that requirement. But if she doesn't have the five necessary symptoms, then we can cross it out.
Um, and then let's talk about PTSD. So PTSD um, occurs after one month has passed from an acute stressor and it lasts greater than one month. So um, unlike acute stress disorder, which occurs, but which lasts three to 30 days, PTSD lasts for greater than one month. So she technically, it has been a month. However, she doesn't have symptoms of, again, same as acute stress disorder, she doesn't have the symptoms of flashbacks and uh, active avoidance, um, and then irritability, hypervigilance. Uh, so she doesn't really have these arousal kind of symptoms. In fact, she kind of has the opposite. So we can take that one out as well. And then the other interesting one is adjustment disorder with depressed mood. So adjustment disorder, um, develops within three months of a stressful event and it lasts less than six months. Uh, these symptoms cause significant impairment in daily functioning um, and they're not a normal response. So here you kind of know that she doesn't have an impairment in daily functioning. You know, she still has, she still spends time with her friends and her kids. Um, this isn't, uh, this is an adjustment disorder with depressed mood. So that leaves us with normal bereavement, uh, which is the answer. So let's make that the answer. And then why is it normal bereavement? Well, her husband died and you know, you're allowed to be sad when your spouse dies. Um, her woken up by the sound of her husband calling her name, that's mostly in a dreamlike state. Uh, completely normal for bereavement. Um, and she does have the depressed mood, the weight loss, the insomnia, but that's only three of the criteria really. And she's not depressed, she just has bereavement. So here are kind of the answers that were, let me unhighlight these. Um, here are the answers. You can pause and you can read them. Um, the answer is C, that one. And then here are kind of the explanations for why major depressive episode is in it, general anxiety disorder, acute stress disorder, PTSD, and adjustment disorder. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching with me, and I hope you enjoyed this question.